So we have our eigenvalues in hand. Let's now find the eigenvectors for each of those eigenvalues. So we'll do this in two cases. In the first case, we'll consider uh, when lambda is equal to 2. Okay? So how do I find an eigenvector? Well, you need to remember back in the definition, again, it's a non-zero vector satisfying the sort of fundamental identity AV equals lambda V, right? Now I can safely, in this particular case, plug in 2 for lambda. So I'll replace the lambda here. And I then want to find a vector v satisfying that equation. Now there are lots of ways to solve this problem using techniques in linear algebra. Here I'm just going to sort of streamline this process so that we by inspection basically find the eigenvector v. So solving this matrix equation, by the way, is tantamount to solving the factored version of that matrix equation. In other words, a minus 2iv equals 0. And let's investigate now the expression inside parentheses. So what is a minus 2 times the identity? Well, effectively, I'm going to subtract 2 from the main diagonal here from a. So 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. So that expression is equivalent to the 2 by 2 matrix of all 1's. Now the goal for us is to solve for v. So I'll just plug in components. Let's say x times y. There's my v vector equals 0, 0. So now I want to solve that corresponding matrix equation where this would be my eigenvector v. Now by inspection, hopefully we can sort of see it pretty readily that if I choose, for instance, v equal to negative 1, 1, then that would be a totally satisfactory eigenvector. In other words, 1, 1 dotted with negative 1, 1 equals 0 with respect to both rows. So in summary, then, we would say for the eigenvalue 2 in this matrix A, a corresponding eigenvector is negative 1, 1. It's also worth mentioning that actually, in fact, any scalar multiple, non-zero scalar multiple of this eigenvector would be an adequate eigenvector uh, representative. Just so happens that negative 1, 1 is one of these sort of simpler versions of that particular eigenvector. And also, it's worth noting, too, when we did the geometric rendering of the same problem for the eigenvectors of the matrix A, this was the vector we had associated with the eigenvalue 2. Now, in the second case, just to finish this up, we consider when lambda is equal to 4, when our eigenvalue is 4. Okay, So we want to solve the corresponding matrix equation A minus lambda now is 4 times the identity V equals 0. So again, we'll investigate the expression in parentheses. What is A minus 4 times the identity? Well, that's the same as subtracting 4 from the main diagonal here. 3 minus 4 is negative 1 in both cases. So what do we have here? We have negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1 times my eigenvector, let's say vxy, equals 0, 0. So we want a v here that satisfies that matrix equation. And once again, we'll just sort of make this as simple as possible. By inspection, you'll notice, if I set v equal to the vector 1, 1, negative 1, 1 dotted with 1, 1 equals 0 in both cases. So in summary, for eigenvalue lambda equals 4, we have the associated eigenvector 1, 1 which once again is in concert with the geometric rendering we did a few moments ago. So there is uh, a nice computational example of finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors by hand for a matrix. And the beauty of this is this, although this was a relatively simple case with the 2 by 2 matrix, this procedure generalizes for higher dimensional matrices. And that then concludes our section on eigenvalues and eigenvectors.